Hello everyone, welcome to a new series for developers who are interested in developing with Experience Cloud and Lightning Web Runtime Sites. In our seventh episode, we will look at why you will need to build custom record pages with LWR sites, and you will also learn how. As we explained earlier in this video series, the LWR template is a build your own template. That means that certain aspects and elements that you're used to from other templates are not available. One of those things are object and record pages. Let's look at what you get with a standard template. We're here in a lower template experience site. If you want to access records, which means data in your Salesforce environment, you have a certain set of standard functionality available to you. Here, for example, we are displaying information about the current user. In our Pages menu, we can see that this is associated with the user object of your Salesforce environment. And the page type offers you built-in functionality, which is not available with the LWR site. First, URLs are context-aware. Because they are built to access records, they come with predefined variable URL segments, like the record ID, which, by the way, are not changeable. Second, you get for this page type out-of-the-box record components for visualizing the data and for making it actionable. Now, with LWR sites, you don't have URL segments or record components out-of-the-box. It is built your own, and this is how it can look like. So far, you have seen the marketing site of our AZ Insurance Sample app. When a visitor submits the request for a quote, we're internally creating a demo record for that. And in our employee portal, which is also an LWR site, our insurance agents can see the created records. Not only as a list, they can also drill down into the record's details. Both the record list and the record detail are custom-crafted Lightning Web components. And as they are Lightning Web components, we can leverage a lot of existing capabilities to create this user experience. For fetching the data, we are using the User Interface API, or in short, UI API. This API is exposed via JavaScript modules for Lightning Web components. Then we have base Lightning components. They are predefined building blocks like buttons, sliders, or the data table that we just saw. Last but not least, we can use the Lightning Navigation service, which we went through in detail in the previous video. So let's dive in. For displaying the records, we are using a Lightning-based component, the Lightning Data Table, which comes with a lot of pre-built functionality to, well, display data in a table. It takes a couple of attributes, like which columns exist, which data it should display, or what actions it should contain. You don't have to use the Lightning Data Table for displaying record lists. It's up to you to determine if it fits your use case and UX requirements, or if you want to create your own HTML and CSS. We built the component also in a reusable way, so that it can be configured using Experience Builder. The object and list view properties are used to specify which existing list view we want to display to our agents. And to actually fetch the data, we are using the UI API. Specifically, we are using the getObjectInfo and the getListUI methods. GetObjectInfo gives us, as the name says, the object's info. And we are here interested in getting the metadata definition of the fields of the object, which are stored in our fields property. Why? Because we have to know the data type of every field so that our data table can render it columns properly. Then we use getListUI to fetch the metadata and data of the specified list view. Mainly we are interested in the columns that are defined for the list view and the records that are shown. Now, this doesn't render us anything yet. You remember the markup of our Lighting Data Table? We have to provide data that's specific to the columns as well as the data itself. And that is what we will do next. Let's first look at the column definition. We use that definition from the list view that we pulled from our GetListUI call to build the same columns in the data table. For defining a column, we need three key values filled. The label, this is what the user sees, the field name, so that the data table knows which data to render in that column, and the type. And here is where things are a bit special. Based on the data type that is specified for a column, the data table renders it. For example, it renders a phone number as a clickable URL. It displays column data as currency or just plain text. And as mentioned before, we used the getObjectInfo method to retrieve the object's field metadata. 
and queries where we need that information. The data type definitions that are available for Lightning Data Table don't map one-to-one -to, -one to those that you get from an object's metadata. In our case, we want to ensure that data fields are rendered as, well, formatted dates and not plain text. Which means, for every column that we build, we have to check if the field type is date time, so that it can be configured to the column to be typed date local. And this is really the only reason why we used getObjectInfo. In our getCustomTableData method, we transform the data shape that we receive from the getListUI call to the data shape that the Lightning Data Table expects. Of course, if you don't need or want agnostic components like this, you can hard code a lot of that. It really depends a lot on how reusable you want your codebase to be, so also check out the documentation that is linked in the description on how to work and extend the Lightning Data Table even more. Now, that we have our list of data, how can we actually navigate to a detailed view? You remember, in other templates we have predefined URL segments that we can't leverage. They don't exist for LWR sites. Instead, we will use query parameters to pass data to our target page. And for that, we will use the Lightning Navigation Service as we did in the previous video. On our list component, we define a page reference that targets the page of our record detail component. We use the common name page type, which allows us to specify the programmatic name of our page. This is lead detail for us. And then we use a state object to define the URL parameters. The Lightning Navigation Service will then construct URL parameters out of that state object. In our detail component, we will then use another base component, Lightning Record Edit Form, to actually display the record data. This will need the record ID that we pass to that page using the Lightning Navigation Service. To achieve that, we are using the current page reference function. From here, we can access in our record detail component the state object that we just populated via our list component. The state is really just a programmatic way to write and read query parameters. And from here, we can get access to the record ID that we then pass to our Lightning Record Edit form. And that's really it on what you have to consider for building custom record pages for LWR sites. There are additional UI API techniques available to create, read, update or delete data. So check out the description of the video to learn more about them. Thanks so much for viewing and see you next time when we talk about how to use third-party JavaScript libraries that should not be subject to Web Components Shadow DOM encapsulation. Pretty cool. Never miss an episode by subscribing and turning on your notifications.